In one small neighborhood, normal people are killing their friends, claiming they are somebody else. Could it be a subliminal signal installed in their televisions that is bringing on this psychosis? Let's find out. The episode opens with a frantic man, Joseph Patnick, burying a body on a misty night. He shouts names at it, saying his killing days are over. Joseph makes it home and is washing the blood and soil off, but when he turns around, the man is alive again. He screams and takes his shovel running to the man again. Back at the burial site, he is digging another grave when the police show up to inquire what he's up to. The officers, both of them, are the same guy he just killed, but in cop uniforms. Joseph starts to react violently, so the police tase him. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. While being tied, Joseph snaps out of it, and the police open his trunk to see he has murdered Sarah, his wife. An anonymous informant from the FBI meets Mulder in the middle of the night. He hands Mulder a newspaper article saying Mulder should look into it or more people will die. Mulder and Scully follow up on the murders by visiting Joseph in an insane asylum. Joseph, who has no history of mental illness yet killed five people, claimed all were the same man. Down his street, two weeks earlier, a babysitter attacked the children she was minding, claiming they were wolves. Dr. Stroman introduces himself, stating he came down from Washington to give a clear diagnosis. Stroman says he suspects a medicine overdose has caused his psychosis. Suddenly, while watching the news, Joseph freaks out and has to be restrained. The story is about a Bosnian war criminal who killed many people. Mulder tells Scully this case came from an unknown source. They are being used and must figure out why it is an X-File. They search through Joseph's home, and upon entering, two kids are found inside watching violent shows on TV. Mulder sends them to school. The TV goes static, and Mulder notices the cable guy outside climbing down a pole. Joseph's home is ordinary, except for all the videotapes he recorded from the TV news. At their hotel, both agents are watching the videos found at the home. Scully discovers, on the nights of the murders, Joseph watched news regarding the atrocities in Bosnia by a war criminal. Scully surmises there is a connection between this criminal and Joseph murdering five people. She knows there is a correlation between violence on TV and criminal behavior, but Mulder points out that people have free will and seeing violence doesn't necessarily cause it. The big mystery is, how did these news programs trigger Joseph's violent behavior? Scully continues to watch the rest of the tapes all night until she hears Mulder's phone ringing. She thinks he is talking about her. He leaves the room and she spies on him from behind the soda machine. He is smiling and handing evidence to their arch nemesis, also known as the Smoking Man, whose job it is to cover up government conspiracies. She cannot believe Mulder has betrayed her in such a sneaky way. A housewife, Helene Riddick, is listening to game shows while doing the dishes. Suddenly, the bubbles get distorted and the room is static. She looks outside and sees her husband having fun on a hammock with some blonde. She gets her rifle and stops the affair before it begins. Scully is acting strangely, searching the car for cigarette ash and questioning where Mulder went last night. They arrive at the Riddick murder and find that Helene actually shot her neighbor who was playing with his blonde dog. Her husband was out of town all week. They go through Helene's belongings and find she taped most of her daytime shows. Scully starts to watch them immediately, thinking the TV plays a big part in these murders. Mulder looks out the window and sees the same cable guy. He calls for him to stop, but the guy drives away. Mulder climbs the pole to see what he was installing and finds some sort of unusual transmitter was placed there. He takes it as evidence, but Scully doesn't trust him and wants to bring it in for testing herself. Mulder tells her to go interview Riddick, and he takes it to his geek friends for examination. They call themselves the Lone Gunmen and don't trust the government either. They are masters of technology. 
The lone gunman show Mulder this transmitter has been sending subliminal messages through the signal bursts fired into the tubes. They don't yet know what the signals are sending and will test it further. Later, Scully calls Mulder, saying she asked the FBI and he never had the transmitter analyzed there. He tells her he's coming over to explain why and what he found. Scully hears clicking and thinks her phone is being bugged. She won't answer it anymore. Instead, she tears apart her room, searching everywhere for the surveillance devices. She is getting increasingly paranoid that Mulder is out to get her. Perhaps he is working for the other side. She, too, is seeing her hotel room interfered by static. When Mulder arrives, she locks the door, grabs her gun, and then shoots repeatedly through the door when the clerk unlocks it. Scully is now missing, and Mulder calls her mother saying that they are concerned about her, for she has been displaying abnormal behavior. Mulder speaks with Director Skinner, telling him Scully is suffering from paranoid psychosis, probably brought on by the videotape she's been watching. He has evidence they contain some kind of signal, changing the viewer's behavior, making them homicidal. He urges Skinner to ask the police approach her with extreme caution and to call him when they find her. The geek gang ask Mulder to come down, since Big Brother is listening, and see what they have discovered hidden in the tapes. They've slowed down the color bursts to analyze them and reveal that these induce electrical changes in the brain. The geeks explain that advertisers use similar technology during intermission breaks at theaters so people want to buy popcorn or think they're thirsty. However, this technology is much more sophisticated, bordering on mind control. Mulder is not affected by it because he is colorblind. He gets a call, and it's the state police. They think they found Scully and want him to come down to the morgue to identify the body. Yikes, what a terrible end to the X-Files. But wait, there's more, because we know it goes on for another seven seasons. Mulder is devastated, but before he can get to the coroner, the anonymous informant orders him inside his car. He says Mulder is blowing this case. While he's wasting time, the culprits are destroying the evidence. Frustrated by the man's lack of compassion, Mulder kicks his car. The coroner shows him the body, and much to Mulder's relief, he sees it's not Scully. The FBI already tried to reach Scully's mother, but she's not answering her phone. Mulder arrives at her mother's house, but she won't let him in, telling him she's not here. He walks through the door, and Scully holds a gun on him, telling her mother Mulder came to kill her. Her mother tries to stop her, but Scully insists he is the enemy who will murder her. He tries to talk her down, but to no avail. Scully repeats all the terrible things that have happened to her and accuses Mulder of being behind them all. Finally, her mother gets between them and comforts Scully until she breaks down crying in her arms. The next day, Mulder comes to visit Scully at the psychiatric hospital. She seems much better now. He asks her how she feels and she admits she feels ashamed. Scully confesses that she saw and heard things and felt like the world was upside down with everyone out to get her. Mulder replies, now she know how he feels most of the time. To no oneself. When Scully tells him she thought he was going to kill her, he replies he's not surprised and goes on to explain about the subliminal signal being emitted by the tube in the cable box. The murderers saw in others what they feared most. For Joseph, it was the war crimes, since his parents were Holocaust survivors. For Helene, it was infidelity, since her husband cheated on her before. As far as the babysitter goes, okay, wolves, now that's kind of weird. For me, everyone would look like Bigfoot or my 8th grade gym teacher. Mulder calls what they saw in their dementia a virtual reality of their own nightmares. Scully fears Mulder? Well, it is hard to trust people who work for the government. Scully's doctor says there is nothing wrong with her, but the spinal tap revealed high levels of serotonin in her brain, which is associated with mania. Mulder calls a psychiatric hospital and learns Stroman went back to Washington. He learns the doctor was staying at the same hotel as they were and has just checked out. The owner lets him in and gives Mulder a record of his local calls. Mulder notices the cigarette-smoking man has also been there. 
Stroman called the phone in a house just outside town. As Mulder is about to knock, he sees the cable guy pull up. Mulder eavesdrops on their conversation inside and learns they are waiting for their handler, but he's late. Soon after, Mulder hears two shots ring inside. He busts down the door to investigate. The two men are dead, and Mr. X, his upper-level double-agent informant who wants all the conspiracies exposed, is there. X admits his order was to kill the men, and Mulder failed his mission. Had he solved the case sooner, all the evidence wouldn't have been destroyed. Mr. X says the signal technology isn't just for advertising, politics, and commerce. But now, they'll never know how far they will go with it. Mulder calls him a coward and threatens to kill him, but X says he won't kill him because Mulder needs him to keep the X-Files going. In the final report, Skinner is disappointed that Mulder didn't discover who manufactured the device or why it was tested on innocent people. They reveal the cable guy was just that, but there is no record of a Dr. Stroman. As for the killer of all those men, it remains unknown, so Mulder reports. Later, we see Mr. X is an agent, like the cigarette smoking man, whose job it is to cover up and eliminate evidence. However, he is also an informant, making sure the X-Files succeeds. So what do you think of this one? We all know that TV is bad for you, but can it really make you kill people? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on the next video or the playlist on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to get notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.